So I wanted to do a really quick update. Um, I went to my follow-up yesterday and um, yeah, he started off telling, well basically looking back at all my cycles that I've ever had. Um, obviously the first one was the best um, in regards to egg number, quality, fertilisation rate, everything. So it was um, 19 eggs and 10 fertilised. Um, and we were able to freeze some that cycle. Um, 10, 19 eggs collected, 10 fertilised. I think eight of them were alright afterwards. Two of them we had put back. I think four were, four were frozen. Anyway, that was my pregnancy that happened. Didn't work out, but then we the second round we thawed all four of the embryos, and um, two made it, and the other two didn't last survive the thaw. So we put the two back, um, and it was a chemical pregnancy. So again, it was either my immune issues, it just didn't happen, or chromosomal or egg issue or whatever. Who knows? Who knows? Um, then obviously this time, uh, third time, third transfer, second um, egg collection was 15 eggs and 8 um, fertilised, which was still kind of average amount of fertilisation for all that. Um, but at the end of that one, we, we left them to try and go to blastocyst and there was only two that made one early blastocyst and one blastocyst blastocyst um, and the rest either didn't make it or weren't viable for freezing so really it was kind of out of out of the um, eight eggs only two were um, alright kind of thing and even them they you know I didn't get pregnant so they could have deteriorated too which have meant which would have meant same sort of success as this time really um, and then this time round collected 12 eggs and only four fertilised but they told me that um, out of the 12 eggs there was like a couple that was one was like over mature one was un under mature um, which made 10 straight away so then it's about 40% fertilisation rate um, I actually had five fertilised as well so it would have been 50% but one of the eggs let in a couple of extra sperms so they had like two or three try and get it which I think has happened before he said in one of my other cycles he could look he could see that that had happened once before um but it could that could be an egg quality issue that the egg allowed that to happen or you know just one of those things but um he can't say for definite whether it's a cycle whether he thinks it's just going to be worse and worse as we go along he then checked my amh and we could only find record from um, back in March 2011 it was 24 something which is quite high um, and I was 30 then um, my birthday is in June so I, would I was literally just about to turn 31 um, and then 2012 June last year it was 10.4 so he did say to me yesterday that's quite a significant drop in one year there seems to be quite a bit of a drop which could show that my eggs are just starting to deteriorate and so is my um, um, reserve so I'm 33 now June in June I just turned 33 so I haven't had that tested since over a year obviously I've had it tested mid-cycle and stuff but he said that wouldn't be a true account because you've got like hormones and stuff going on um, so I'm um, debating whether, I get, whether to get that tested again or whether just to go with that but it could be lower than 10.4 now it's been another year who knows I think it might be worth getting it tested but um, yeah he said it could be an egg quality issue um, he said you've got he's not worried about the fact that it went from 19 to 15 to 12 eggs because he still sees anything between like 10 to 15 eggs collected to be of a good good level so he doesn't see me as a low responder as far as follicles um, he said something about perhaps the eggs there was thinks that there was more than that but 
that some of the eggs weren't able to come out. Um, maybe that means that they weren't mature enough. They weren't, weren't ready. Um, that's something to think about, I guess. But um, um, what else? Yeah, he said about about egg quality. Uh, he said, you know, there's nothing nothing to guarantee that that's it. It could be just chromosomal thing. But either way, even if Zav and I have our chromosomes tested, and we or we go to egg collection and then they test test um the embryos. You have to have the embryos to begin with to be able to test them. Um, he did mention donor eggs. He did say, I don't think it's, I think it's too soon to think about donor eggs. I think you should give your eggs another go. Obviously, when they said donor eggs, I kind of was like, oh my God, because I've never had any issues with donor eggs, uh, with my eggs before. But obviously, every time I'm doing IVF, it's just getting worse and worse with finding out I've got, ch my tubes are blocked and then they've filled with fu fluid and then I've got immune issues I've got the MTHFR gene the clotting thing or the thing that doesn't um, absorb folic acid properly and all that um, and all the immunes and cytokines and everything like that and now a possible like reduction in my AMH and egg quality issues just like can it get any worse like but I'm still Zav is to the point where he's like he can't He's he's getting frustrated with me even talking about it, trying to find out answers and trying to email the clinic and stuff. And he's just a bit like, because we're going on holiday, um, he just wants to forget about it. And he just doesn't really want to be paying out more money for it to maybe work. And he said, to, um, I can try, the consultant said I can try and get my um, egg quality better if I wanted to, you know. There's nothing that suggests that that will definitely work, but it's worth a try. And I started the Royal Jelly and the Q Enzyme, Q10, whatever it's called. All of those things um, kind of too late into this cycle to really have made a difference on this round. Although I had started them, it wasn't long enough. Um, but I'm continuing now. I'm just going to continue for months and months and months and just see how it goes. I'm also considering taking DHEA. So if anyone's got any tips on that, because that's a bit controversial, whether it helps or not, and side effects and all of that because if we go for another round it will be our last go because Sav, I don't actually know if he's actually going to want to do this next round in the first place it's obviously we've spent money for nothing no transfer at all we've spent a lot of money for nothing um, and he would have swallowed it knowing that we'd had a chance to have a transfer that could have come, come in a pregnancy a BFM would have been easier to take than spending all that money making me now like literally 100% ready to home or an embryo and to have absolutely nothing to show for it is just it's probably worse than the cycle my first cycle being cancelled because it's not responding to stims i think that's worse because you don't get to the point where you're like oh 12 eggs great oh four fertilized oh my god oh, what like and they they all arrested at day um two they didn't even get past the one went to four cells and the other two to three cells stayed there and started to deteriorate um and the fourth cell will still look the same the next the next day and the next day. So it was just like pointless. Um, he ha yesterday he said that he wouldn't change my protocol, and I think he meant as far as medication, because um, today I emailed him to say could he let me know the sperm um, analysis from this time so I can compare it with the last ones. But he said there's no problems there, um, and. He said, yeah, so he's, he's going to email that. I asked him about DHEA and he said it has, you know, it has shown in some patients that it's made a difference. So if you wanted to take it, that would be up to you. Um, there's no guarantee it will help, but you can try. Um, and I also asked him, uh, I can't remember what else I asked him, but he emailed me back to say, oh yeah, about ICSI. I have had so many people, so many of my good IVF buddy friends telling me, that I, they're surprised that I didn't do ICSI and stuff uh, um, or was suggested to do ICSI but that is because I've never had any issues with egg quality, fertilisation rate or Zav sperm or anything like that so I guess like there was no reason to think about ICSI but um, now that there's an egg quality issue I've kind of thought about, this, thought about the fact that we 
would we get a better success rate doing ICSI considering we could then choose the best eggs and implant them with the best sperm rather than just kind of leaving them to their own devices and maybe the good sperm goes to the bad egg and do you know what I mean it would just like for me it just feels like it's duh, like um so I emailed him and he said that he doesn't think that in this case it would make much difference because it's not a sperm issue but we could assess it once it got to like another egg collection and we had eggs in front of us to kind of talk about um so it would mean saving more money um but if it's going to be the last chance because that even the consultant was like give it one more go um before moving to donor eggs and stuff and i was just like oh, god and yeah so that was that and he also at the end of his email after saying about not changing protocol he said i would for the next go i would try you on an agnostic short protocol um and i've spoken to some people that also go to the same clinic as me and they say that he he usually does that when he sees that there might be risk of slightly lower egg quality or um you know low response from drugs and stuff and it, I think it just means I don't have the bucerolin to stop my ovaries from working in the beginning. I think I have my period and I stim straight away from my natural cycle. And apparently, if it, if it did, this would be amazing. But apparently it can help with egg quality. Because um, if you're if you're down-regulated for too long or whatever, your ovaries are you know just a bit tired and they're told to stop. And then you're suddenly told them, telling them with the stims to create um, eggs. So it's kind of like might be better to have it from straight away from a natural cycle. So that's what they say he says that he would do next time. I'm looking into starting acupuncture from now and those pills just to get myself and my body ready. I don't know whether my eggs were such bad quality this time. They weren't such bad quality, but they were why why they were bad quality this time because of all the exercise I was doing. I was doing insanity obviously. Um and there was a period of a couple of months where I was losing weight and um, I was on a lot of um, low low calorie diet meals. I wasn't eating very much fresh food and I don't know whether that's made an effect on my eggs because, you know, obviously it's never gone to a pregnancy before but that could have just been my immune issues but now on top of that it could be the egg issue. So... Yeah, I'm just debating whether to... Well, I'm not debating. I'm actually going to start... When I come back from France, where I'm going on holiday, I'm going to do my acupuncture, if I can afford it. And I'm going to take the, all the, the DHEA, if you guys think it's fine, or where I can get it from and stuff. Micronized, apparently. It's got to be micronized. And I'm going to try and eat clean and green teas and no alcohol, no caffeine, like everything for like till the end of the year literally I don't care kind of thing just going to do what it takes um, obviously with finances we we borrowed a certain amount from Zav's work but we've actually eaten into it way more than we thought we would because of all the immunes and everything and the things they just like to spring at you in the last minute oh we ch checked your progesterone level oh okay great yeah, yeah that's £45 and I'm like, mm. um, he yeah, so what we decided to do is, because we, we, um, Zab had quite a few like credit cards and things or whatever over the years, and we just had them sitting there paying them off minimal payment or whatever, and Zab was always a bit like, oh, now we're going to have this the loan on top, and, you know, if I, get, if I fall pregnant, uh, what they, what, how's he going to cope on his own paying for all these things? So I knew straight away when this failed, I knew that, there was no point doing another round on top and going into the loan even more and having all these other things still behind us so I made the kind of a bit of the bullet <sighs> reluctantly obviously I would start straight away but I have to think about us as a couple and our future as well you know it's just like how much more can we go through so um what we decided to do is put the money the re remaining money which wasn't a lot it was like three thousand something on basically everything that we we've basically cleared like two or three things and we've got like these <laughs> sofas to pay off which is nothing it's like yeah nothing um so in the next month 
and a half, even with the, the half of the loan, because like I say, it wasn't that much, we would have paid off everything that we owe between us as a couple. Um, Zab only has his um, a motorbike that he bought, he has to commute with to work, um, and it's safe and it's it, he's got quite a journey to work, so he, he's got that and he'll be paying that off every month. And um, between us, we'll be paying off the loan only. We'll be paying off the loan that we got from his work. So, um, yeah, that was basically a step to move us forward on the basis that we, with our disposable income that we've got left, that we start putting aside money for, for one more IVF attempt. <laughs> so this would mean that we can start saving from, like, October maybe um, to plan to to hope to to do another cycle I don't think it'll be by the end of the year it'll probably be like January or something like that it depends how quickly we can save and what other crap comes up in the meantime but we just thought it's better to save money and then if the if the IVF doesn't work then we can't we won't have extra to pay on top. We'll just be like, right, well, we've saved that money, so it's gone, it's gone. It's, it's money wasted, but it's not money we have to owe on top of other things. So it was scary for me to do that because I had to kind of put my my want and my need to do IVF again now on hold. But um, I'm not doing my last attempt without having explored everything and obviously I've got to do my whole tubal thing as well because they're waiting to see whether this IVF would work to, to wait to have my actual tubes taken out so if I can go into another cycle with no tubes no hydrocell pinks no worry about that it would actually probably heighten my um, success when it comes to implantation not the egg issue though so mm. I don't know what you guys think after all that. Um, has anyone had such a decrease in AMH over like a year from 20, 24 to 10.2? I think it was not 10.4, um, which is a lot in a year. It's actually a year and three months, but it's a lot. And it could have gone down since then, so I don't even know. Apparently my FSH is normal. Um, and my AMH is still on a normal range. He's like, I'm not worried about the fact your AMH is 10.4 at age 33 because that's still in a normal range but it's the fact that it's dropped so quickly that could be a sign that my eggs are deteriorating <sighs> so I just feel like everything's against me everything everything I don't I've, it's taken me about two days to even do this video I've taken myself off Facebook because I just couldn't even when I came off Facebook before for a break, I just would log in and then I'd just get upset and then I would whatever. So I was just like, right, I just need to deactivate it for a bit and just oh, not think about IVF for a bit. Just think about it, but not be there like following people that I was supposed to be on the two week wait with. And I just, I'm just losing, losing hope. So, yeah. That's me. If anyone's got anything that they can advise me about any of these things, sorry, it's now nearly twenty minutes long. Um, but um, yeah, that's me for now. Uh, if there's anything for me to update you on, I will. But like I say, Zav's at the point where he's like, don't even talk to me about IVF. He's just angry, angry, angry with it because I've, you know, he was hard enough for him to swallow paying all this money as it is without. With this happening, it's just made my life as well much more difficult to try and get him to be... Obviously, I don't want to force him to do it either, but I can't imagine life without having children with him. It's just, you know, it's just... We sat in bed trying to think about the whole donor thing, and he... No offence to anyone that did does it, does it. That's completely up to you, but he would rather just, just be us than, you know, than do that. I don't know. Um, but, yeah... Anyway, thank you for all your support and your prayers. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad I don't have to do those bum shots anymore. Oh, they were killing me. Um, but I'm going to go on holiday and try and enjoy myself. And in two weeks' time, I'm going to start Focus T25. And I'll let you know how that goes. But for now, another disappointment. <laughs>